Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Retifos, where I take old stories and update them to modern techniques and standards. This particular story is called One Man's Trash, written by Regal Legal Eagle. Xavier Tetch glanced sideways at the others in his crew. Those that were left, that is. Five of them, himself included. That four-armed Grashen Tula, looking deadly and hot as always, with her daggers, Nack Ross, shifted his massive stone arms ready for another booby trap or crystalline guardian to appear. Jurek was still fiddling with her rebreather, trying to get the appropriate mixture for the atmosphere on the moon. And of course, the professor. The only other human was in front of the sarcophagus trying to disarm the lock and get it open. They'd lost six to the traps and the guardians in the ancient Sophic tomb, but the treasure the professor had told them about was just too good to pass up. Overall, Xavier had been prepared for the others to try and stab him in the back or shove him off a ledge since humans were the new kids in the block, galactically speaking. So most of them didn't fully appreciate the resourcefulness he brought to the table. But truthfully, everyone had been spending too much time surviving to worry about betraying everyone. Until now. His hand slowly moved up to his side, slipping under the back hem of his jacket as he looked at the Xenos on either side, Jarek and Nack first to the right, Tula to the left after them. There was a very loud click as the professor did something and the stone top of the sarcophagus began to creak open. Got it, he exclaimed as Xavier's fingers closed around the handles of Athena and Aphrodite. He yanked them free, pulling the triggers even. As he leveled them out, the Xeno started to turn as he hit Knack in the side of the head several times, blasting rock-like chunks out before the Xeno flew back. Jurek was reaching for her personal shield generator, but she never made it as the bullet slammed into her, peppering her body and letting gases escape out of her pressure suit. Tula, though, was quick. She turned, spinning her daggers as Xavier realized his mistake in shooting her last. Just as he twisted and leaned back, she was already too close a pair of daggers slicing off his left hand and sending Athena flying as he screamed out. Another dagger slashed up across his face, but then he had Aphrodite pressed against her chest as he held the trigger down, knocking the Xeno back, purple blood spewing from the wounds and splattered across him from the ground. Back! Xavier screamed, dropping Aphrodite and clutching this bleeding stump. He looked over at the professor, who was ducking down, hands over his head, Professor! Professor! Xavier growled out until the man hesitantly pulled his hands back and looked around. Come on, the dead. The treasure is just for you and me now. Get that search kit over here, though. The professor quickly moved, pulling the military-grade search kit, holding it up to Xavier's bleeding stump. The device quickly slapped a biogel onto the stump and then sealed up the wound before dumping morphine into Xavier's bloodstream. He'd deal with his right eye later. The cut had sealed it shut with blood, so he's only looking out of his left for now. Oh, uh, that's the stuff. He gasped as the drugs did their work and the pain completely vanished. <laughs> why, why did you kill them? The professor finally asked. Because that way it's just 50-50 split. They'd have betrayed us once we got out of here, you know. What's in there? Xavier's mind was already focusing on the golden gems, the ancient alien artifacts. The professor walked over and reached in pulling out a stone tablet. He began to read it as Xavier stood back, grabbing Aphrodite and walking over to look inside. The Vec! It's just shriveled old corpse! He gasped out as he saw what was inside the stone sarcophagus. Ah, uh, the tablet says, uh, by now you've passed our tests of poetry, enlightenment, and wisdom. You will see the greatest treasure is not riches or wealth, but uh, peace and serenity. The ability to find the tranquility in a universe and appreciate the riches of life and nature. Xavier looked over at the professor, open mouth. But what? That's what it says. The professor hefted its own tablet. The traps and guardians were supposed to be defeated with poetry and stuff, I guess. Not explosives and weapons. They stood there and quiet for a moment before Xavier lifted his right hand and shot the professor through the chest shaking his head as the professor dropped down dead. Yeah, oh, Jesus Christ. Fact these ancient ruins, crap. Xavier muttered as he walked over to pick up his left hand with Athena still in its grip. He tucked the hand and gun into his pack and began walking out of the tomb. 
Xavier blood-eyed Tetch sucked in a breath as Saul sealed up a hole in his shin with a bone plug, his cybernetic eye remaining open as he squeezed his left eye shut reflexively from the pain. These little cats fought damn hard to protect whatever was in the vault. This had to be worth it. After hearing about the secret vault in the Lacat homeworld, he had assembled a crack team of thieves, mercs, and pirates to raid the facility. He was down to just six men, not including himself. But there they were, at the vault itself. Nassif was cracking the code now, while the others guarded the Lacat aristocrats that they'd captured, and Souls worked on patching him up. You fiends, vile ruffians! One of them was growling at Xavier, but he just ignored the Xeno. Heard it before, he muttered with a sigh. Instead, he focused on the few left in his crew. Remember, we all get an even split. And if I don't make it out of here, then you don't get the antidote. I won't have any of you betraying the others. There's going to be more than enough to go around. Look at the size of this vault, not to mention the security that were killed in the way. I still can't believe you poisoned us. The simbering ember headed Xeno Kija growled. Truth was he hadn't actually poisoned them, he just told them that. I've been in too many treasure hunts to know how tempting it is. I want as many of us walking out of this one as possible, Xavier promised. Speaking of, you're good, Saul said before helping Xavier back up to his feet. The metallic fingers squeezing the handle of Athena as he nodded and turned to the vault. There was a very promising click, then the massive metal doors began to swing out. Xavier grinned wide, prepared for golden gems and ancient artifacts. Uh, but nothing inside was gleaming. He frowned and stepped forward, walking into the vault as Nassif was packing up her gear. Looking around the vault, he found a small case at the back, and that's it. Opening the case, he saw a small hydroponic setup for a small plant or tree or something, and a pair of old envelopes and wax seals. What the feck is this? He asked, grabbing the envelopes with his right hand, feeling them crinkle and tear a little, since they were so delicate. The love letters between the Princess Tosca and General Haruma, the founders of our nation, and that's the scion tree they grew together. It still lives to show their endearing love and remind us that love truly is the greatest of treasures. Xavier clenched his teeth hard and crumpled up the letters and ripped the small tree out of the soil. No, oh, that's just great. You drag us all this way and get most of us killed over. Kija was starting to complain, but Xavier just tossed the tree into her face and lifted Athena, shooting her in the face while she staggered back from getting hit by a tree. As flames burst from out of her skull, Higgs had to quickly slap out the fire caught on his jacket. Xavier ignored us, though, and reached down, squeezing the Xeno aristocrat by the throat and yanking him into the air. Say that again. Xavier growled. L -l -l Love is our g -g greatest t treasure. Xavier squeezed hard and crushed the Zeno's throat, dropping him to the ground. As the Zeno choked and gasped for air, Xavier quickly shot the other prisoners in the head with Athena. For a moment, him and the remainder of his team stood there in silence. I'm fucking done with Zeno treasure. Human treasures only from now on, he growled and began to limp back the way that they'd come as his anger faded and was replaced with exhaustion. The others hesitated, then moved to follow. Captain Xavier, blood-eyed Tetch, second most wanted pirate in the galaxy, sighed heavily as he tucked Athena and Aphrodite back into the holsters before reaching up to scratch his beard. So we're all done with the mutiny, right? Between that and those nightmare fuel creatures, we're all down to what? Fifteen of us? I told you, I told you all, there will be enough to go round. Oh, we got a boss, Higgs said with a gulp. Oh, you know I was in on it, right, boss? Xavier set his hand on Higgs's shoulder, giving it a squeeze. I know, Higgs, I know. He looked around the old metal hull around them for a moment. The wreck of the JRS Kraken. Now here was a true human legend. He'd even heard the stories when he was a kid. Fat with loot from the Daedalus campaign, it was lost in the solar storm and went down with all hands in unknown system where here he was now in the hull. The only obstacle left was a cargo bay door in front of them now, and Sivan, Nassif's daughter, was working on the controls to the side. The fact that Harren and the others had tried to betray him made him sad, but nothing could be done about it. This was also why he'd left most of the crew back on the ship. 
He'd lost 30 good sailors and fighters today, but he still had more this time. He wasn't feeling very talkative this time, just a little worried. But then there was a click as the door controls were fixed and the door itself slid to the side. Xavier felt that usual hope rising within him, figuring that there would be gems and gold and alien artifacts. When the door opened fully, he saw inside crates. Okay, that's all right. They were transporting cargo, so it made sense that it would be stored in crates. And there were a great deal of crates. He walked forwards, having to limp since the servos in his cybernetic leg had seized up, with all the alien guts clogging them after his crew had fought through the bastards on the surface to make it into the ship. As he reached the first crate, he closed his good eye for a moment, that unflinching cybernetic eye still observing the crate, before he opened his other eye and then opened the crate. He looked inside for a moment and then closed the lid, walking over quietly to a shorter crate, which he sat on heavily. The crew looked at him with worried faces. For Xenos, they really cared for their human captain. They got especially worried when Xavier began to cry. Higgs hesitantly opened the lid on the crate. What there? He muttered softly and pulled out one of the objects inside, a magazine. As he held it open, a page unfolded, and then he held it sideways. Oi! Look at that! It's an old porno mag! Oh, wait! Higgs pulled the manifest off the side and began to read. It's all vintage porridge stuff. Uh, some of the first interspecies vids and pictures too. Boss, this stuff's really valuable. Oh, this is as the recordings we thought were lost to history. The right collector will pay for the stuff. Seriously. I guess the valuable treasure they add was uh, history uh, and, you know, uh, porn. Xavier just had his head in his hands, crying, I just want gold coins, treasure. Is that too much to ask? He looked up for a moment, tears running down the sides of his face, over the scars and cuts, and into his beard before he buried his face back into his hands. Dread Captain Xavier Blood Eye Tetch, most wanted pirate in the galaxy, had to admit that the view from the surface of the planet was pretty spectacular. The rings and bright moons in the sky made for one hell of a view. Plus, the stars were as vivid and bright as he remembered them being as a kid. Come on, Cap! He heard and sighed, pulled from his reprieve as he walked over to follow the others through the small grove of blue and gleaming white moon trees. Beautiful night out, and to be honest, He'd had fun so far. The riddles had gotten a bit trickier as they followed them across the planet, but he'd figured them out and been good sport in pretending that he didn't notice the clues his crew were dropping. When they came out of the grove and he saw the giant X on the ground in the gully, he had to keep himself from laughing and spoiling it. Uh, oh, well, Cap, look, look, look at that. It X marks the spot, just like the old treasure map said. I told you that we'd need shovels, Higgs said with a grin. Uh, yeah, Higgs. Good thing you brought them, Xavier said with a forced smile. But, uh, I got this one. He walked down to the gentle slope to the center of the X and switched view modes on his cybernetic eye. He located the metal crate beneath the surface and then jammed his upgraded left arm down into the ground, gripping the top and yanking it free of the soil. Good thing the soil had been dug up recently, so it was nice and soft. When he saw the crate, he noticed the cooling unit on the sides and snorted before setting it down. Oh, well, Bosch, uh, look at that! A chest of buried treasure! Well, uh, go on then, open it! He glanced around and saw the happy and cheerful faces of his crew. He couldn't let them down, so he smiled and flipped the latch with a soft click and pulled the lid up. He didn't expect gold and gems and alien artifacts, but inside... There were glittery gold coins, illuminated by the light of the top of the crate, that made them shine more clearly in the night. Wow, look at that! Ancient gold coins from Earth, boss! Xavier picked up a coin and peeled back the wrapper, biting the chocolate inside. He actually nodded at the taste and chewed slowly before swallowing. W what? Higgs asked, now obviously confused. They're chocolate, Higgs. You bought this crate from a dosh trawler, yeah? They love chocolate. To them, this really was worth whatever you thought you were paying for a crate of green and gold coins. Didn't you wonder why they kept it refrigerated? Higgs' shoulders slumped, and Xavier noticed the forlorn looks on the other Zenos. Hey now, don't look so sad. I had fun tonight, and look around. 
He waved at the gleaming trees around him, and then the rings and the moons in the sky. Look at this wonderful spot you took me to. It's beautiful. Oh, wh 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 when did you, did you figure it out, boss? Higgs asked. When you brought me the map. Higgs, no one actually makes a treasure map on paper with riddles and clues like that. But it was a very nice gesture. Come on, guys. Get some of this chocolate. It's good stuff. As his crew clustered around, he hugged some of them to his sides as they began to laugh and smile at the whole situation. Well, Bosha, I guess you could say the greatest treasure is fam... He stopped as Xavier jammed the barrel of Aphrodite under his chin. Don't you fucking say it, Xavier growled, completely serious. The greatest treasure is gold and gems and alien artifacts. Uh, 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 that's what I was going to say, boss, Higgs gasped out. Xavier pulled the gun back, holstering it, as his friend gulped and rubbed his chin nervously. Ah, uh, what I mean is the greatest treasure is family jewels of a long-dead space king I heard about. Xavier was quiet for several seconds. Did you really hear about? No, forget it. Let's just eat the chocolate and go home. Xavier had learned his lesson by this point. But what if Higgs had really... No, 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 no he was done. Ah, uh, but maybe. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.